the poachers. Now keep your eyes over to the left because I do see a cheetah hanging out on the hill. Now cheetahs are the fastest land animal on earth, running speeds about 60 to 70 miles per hour at a time. But they can only keep that speed for a couple of yards though, kind of use their tail as an anchor, makes it very easy to turn those high speeds. And they are primarily daytime hunters, which is typically the most large cat species, and generally won't get down anything much larger than them. But one of my favorite things about cheetahs is that they're the only large cat who is able to purr. Look at that. Wow. Now, speaking of large cats, around this corner is a large rock structure known as a kopi. And sometimes on this kopi, you can find a lion pride. Now, lions are nocturnal, so if you do find them, there's a good chance that they are probably sleeping. Let's head all the way around this kopi and see if we can find them. That's like where the giraffe or the zebra was when that one came around the rock thing. Oh yeah, take a look over to your left. On top of the rock there is a lioness. Now, like I said, lions are nocturnal, being inactive about 16 to 20 hours out of the day, saving all the energy from the hunting they do mostly at night. And when it comes to hunting, it is a lioness who do most of it. The male lion will stay behind to protect the boundaries of the pride. Let's see if we can find that male lion as well. Sam. What's <laughs> that? Oh yeah, there he is. See that famous man up there? Wow. Like I'm sleeping. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. Uh, during the daytime, both humans and lions with the same eyesight. And at nighttime, their eyes are about six times stronger than ours. That's most of the hunting is done at night. And that's some extra padding on the feet, which makes it very easy for them to sneak them on their prey very quietly. Now coming up on the left hand side is the cutest animal on the entire reserve, in my opinion, the warthogs. One of the largest burrowing animals in the world. And when they go into the burrow shape back into it, now we just see any predators come along, they'll get a face full of tusk. And although they're very small and their legs are very skinny, they can actually run speeds about 30 miles per hour. Do you see a couple more, or there's one more animal up ahead actually. There'll be two coming up on the right hand side, these little brown antelope are known as a bontabok, a very close relative of the wildebeest. And a couple years ago, they were almost hunted to near extinction where there were less than 20 of them left out in the wild. But due to results across Africa, they have been driving once oh, again. One of the greatest success stories we have out here. Those are ostrich eggs. Now, I'm not seeing the ostrich around. Oh, I do see another antelope over to our right, actually. A white antelope back there, that's known as an adax. A pretty incredible animal. They've been known to go almost their entire life without drinking any water. They got all the water they need from all the plants that they eat. I'm back to those ostrich eggs. Each one of those eggs weighs about three pounds each. That's the equivalent of three dozen chicken eggs. And they're so incredibly thick, a human can't sit on top of those eggs, do little to no damage at all. We're gonna start heading back into the forest as we start to make it back to the water coast. I do see a few more animals up ahead. Now coming up on the left hand side, you're going to see the Scimitar Horned Oryx. They get the name from the Middle East and sort of the same name, the Scimitar, which is the same shape as their horn. And you're pretty lucky to get a look at this animal as in the 1980s they were declared extinct out in the wild. Only things you can find them are in African reserves such as this. But just recently, a small herd was just re-released out into the wild. And even a baby scimitar was born in that small herd for the first time in 30 years on the wild. So some progress to the animal is just very slow, but rather some than none. And these gates right here do mean we're leaving reserve and it is bringing an end to our safari. But there is no end to what we can do to help some of the animals I've seen today and one of those is donate to the Disney Conservation Fund. Now when you donate, you just match every dollar down to the very last cent and 100% of all those proceeds go to a project to help animals. In example, one of these projects is the Elephant and Bee Project. We're going to the elephants are actually scared of bees. So farmers in Africa have started putting bee hives in some of their crops. 
that when elephants come near, they hear the buzz on the bees and backs away. Now, that protects the farmer's vegetation, but more importantly, keeps the elephants away from the farmers who's trying to protect their livelihood. That. You can donate in Alms Kitty Disney Animal Kingdom Merchandise Store as well as Quick Service Location. And when you donate, get a special recognition button as a thank you. Hold on, Sam. Oh. Alright, I'm not going to be dropping you off here, but back where you loaded earlier, so I hang out with me for just a couple more minutes. I'm going to call Warden, let them know that we are on our way. And as we pass, say Jumbo to Crispy. <laughs> Jumbo! Crispy! <laughs> <laughs>